Minutes after seven to have a look at what's happening on the market side of things is uh, Martin Strauss, who's from Shane at Johannesburg. And of course, we have Jamil Ahmed, who's from FXTM, joining us on the line. Jamil, I'm going to start off with you. How are we seeing emerging markets, the performance of the dollar, considering that we did see, um, you know, some of the emerging market currencies take a bit of a beating, so to speak, when that greenback was strengthening over the past months or so? Good morning. So I think what everybody is really looking to see as we head into Q4 is whether we get any further indications that investors are beginning to become more negative on the greenback. Obviously, we saw the news in the middle of last week that the dollar hit its lowest value in three months. This was positive news for emerging markets, and it's one of the reasons behind the rally in the South African rand last week. Um, But there's still a lot of uncertainty over trade, and we saw yesterday this news that China has supposedly called off trade discussions with the United States because of the ongoing Uh, rhetoric from Trump to threaten further tariffs. So we saw a lot of pressure on Asian currencies. However, European emerging markets performed better yesterday, and it appears that they're trying to jump on the back of the Turkish lira rally because the lira jumped substantially on reports that there's going to be discussions between the United States and Turkey later this week regarding the possible release of the U.S. pastor who has been held in Turkey for some time. You know, what's interesting about Turkey is that, uh, you know, we had the Turkish finance minister announcing his plan to combat the lira currency uh, weakness. Uh, but at the same time, we also had on the local front here in South Africa, where uh, President Sul Ramaphosa released his stimulus um, package. And generally when countries, you know, uh, release a stimulus package in the uh, cases of, I suppose, Japan and India, something positive happens in the market. From a South African point of view, did you see anything happen with the RAND when Cyril uh, released that stimulus package? Um, Not necessarily. Actually, the contrasts are quite uh, big between those different circumstances. So both the Turkish Lira and the South African RAND actually reacted negatively to their invest- to the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister's uh, packages last week. In the case of Turkey, it was because economic forecasts got downgraded and that they're going to be growth that's even less than half what we were expecting last year is what's going to come out of Turkey over the next two years. And with South Africa, look, it's, posi- it's positive that there's fiscal stimulus and there are, I, that there are ideas to bring in more fiscal stimulus into the economy. However, there are some sort of doubts and underlying concerns over what impact this really could have on South African economic growth. And I think more people are looking towards the data over the near term for indications that South Africa should hopefully only be in a short-term technical recession. All right, uh, Martin, I'm going to bring you into this conversation. How did you view um, last week's assessment of the markets? Uh, Nastasia, yeah, I think what's important to note is that those US markets have really exceptionally hard for the last while. That economy is in great shape. It's been doing really well despite the trade wars uh, that we've been seeing. And um, you know what? And, and what that sort of results to is that uh, is that there will be an interest rate decision over the next two days. So the Fed uh, uh, policy meeting, I think, I believe, starts later today, and the market uh, widely expecting that interest rates will actually uh, increase uh, from the US side. And that's why we're seeing a strong dollar. Uh, as a result of those interest rate increases. So maybe not as much uh, from emerging co- markets, but also from the dollar side, um, that, that economy performing really well. The past couple of weeks, we've been talking about Aspen, and I think last week uh, it fell probably more than 30%. Are we still concerned about what is happening at Aspen? I, I believe so. I think the market is uh, quite jittery about um, what is going on at Aspen. Uh, the baby formula business that they announced that they would be selling was probably considered one of their uh, stronger growth segments going forward. And the problem that we have is that it looks like they it was sort of a forced sale uh, of that division because of uh, very very escalated debt levels within the company. Uh, you know, some some analysts citing that net debt is now four times normalized profit, which is not sustainable, and they were actually in breach of their debt covenants, which is why they they actually. Yeah, to sell. So, yeah. um, not good at all. They're going to have to uh, de gear that balance sheet. They're going to have to, um, you know, just get the financial position of the company in a more, in a more, so in, in a, at a more stable place before uh, before they can continue on the acquisition spree and uh, mm. you know uh, very very large capex investments going forward.
When you look at a company like Aspen and perhaps any other company on the JSC that was probably considered to be the market darlings, we, that is where you would generally gravitate to, do you find that we're now having a second look at these companies that were perceived to be market darlings, either because we're nervous that what was happening with uh, Steinoff maybe happened, not necessarily happening there, but we're just very nervous around companies where if we think there's something going on, you know, the market gets a bit jittery, or is it the sense where, you know, people are just moving on from what was a so-called market darling? What are you seeing in that space? No, I don't think uh, the market's moving on at all. I think the market has, does tend to have a very long memory uh, mm-hmm. of these kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, something like EOH springs to mind immediately. Uh, Aspen, which were the darlings of the market for such a such a long period of time. But also, uh, one has to ask yourself, if companies are growing at, an, at, at a rate that's, you know, way above uh, uh, sort of normalized inflation or GDP growth, uh, it does, it does, you have to ask questions as to how they are maintaining it. Are they doing it organically? Yeah. Are they doing it through acquisitions? Are they doing it through a lot of acquisitions? Uh, you know, probably from now on, I think investors might, uh, might find a little bit more red lights before they, before they invest in, uh, in companies that use those strategies to grow. All right. Jamil, before I let you go, what will you be keeping an eye on for the remainder of the week? This week's going to be a very busy week, actually. Um, most people are going to be looking for the Federal Reserve U.S. interest rate decision, where despite it's already being priced in that U.S. interest rates will be raised once again, there is some sort of consensus that hopefully Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell will, will provide some guidance behind what he expects from U.S. monetary policy next year. However, there's also a, also equally busy week when it comes to U.S. politics. Um, interestingly enough, Donald Trump is set to meet the uh, Japanese Prime Minister over the coming days, and I'm just curious whether any trade rhetoric might come out from the Trump administration, because he has hinted in the past that after this current wave on China, that he will start looking at potential tariffs with Japan. All right, Jamil, thanks so much for your time. That's Jamil Ahmed, who's from FXTM. We still have Martin Strauss from Shane at Johannesburg with us throughout the show.